This here is the Key West Lake. And the Key West Lake is a very special place because, for one, it acts as a very good barricade against the wind. Like today, it was blowing, you know, 15 to 20 miles per hour wind, and uh, it doesn't affect you none when you're out here in the lake. And uh, number two, you know, just 10 strokes out and you're on the fish. I mean, that's good, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I mean, at this point, I'm, I am literally just like 25 yards away from my launch point, and I'm already catching on the fish. Now you're not, you're not, you're not going to be catching no huge ass monster fish up in here, but you know, you're going to be catching, you know, some baby barracudas like that. You're going to be catching snapper. You're going to be getting snook, maybe some baby tarpons. And believe it or not, and a lot of people don't want to believe this but you can find mullet inside this lake all year round even during the hottest months of summer you can find mullet inside this lake in fact it seems like all the mullet like to get up inside this lake during the summertime there's more mullet in this lake than anywhere else during the summer it's ridiculous and people don't want to believe that but you know whatever man you can believe whatever you want to believe and uh you know how I work the mangroves, any mangroves, it doesn't matter where, is you want to get it during the high tide. Like during the shoot of this video, I was um, fishing the last two hours of incoming. But if I was feeling really hardcore, I would have also hit the last two hours of outgoing. And uh, who knows, maybe I would have caught onto a snook. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I would have caught you know a good number of decent fish had I uh, been that hardcore. But you know. It was kind of cold out. It was like 65 degrees out. I'm wet, and you know, it's a little bit uncomfortable. Not unbearable, but a little uncomfortable. And these these pilchards, you know, I, I got at got at the beach. And during this time of the year, during the winter time, um, they're very easy to catch, even though you can't see them. Like at the beach, you can't see shit. I mean, zero visibility. Five inches below the surface zero visibility but you you throw that net around enough times like I, I threw the net like maybe 10 times and I came up with two netfuls you know like 50 pilchards minimum and uh, it's really that easy during this time of year to catch pilchards and uh, you want to pitch them pilchards right up into the mangroves see I just pitched them right in there and you want it just inches away from the root system I kid you not. That's how serious you got to get when you're when you're fishing the mangroves, if you want to catch them fish. <clears throat> and uh, this guy, this guy got chewed up, so I knew there was something going on in there. So what I did, I just split them apart and I chucked the parts in there. You know, get them excited because you know the fish. Once they, some fish will eat it. And then the others will see those fish eat it, and they'll just all fall in line. They'll all want to eat them. So you get that's when you put in your bait. <laughs> okay, that's 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 how you work the mangroves. You can also live chum, uh, but that that's that's how you work the mangroves. And uh, <clears throat> if you're a beginner and uh, you're not getting your hook caught inside the mangroves, inside the leaves, inside the roots, then you're not doing it right. You're not fishing it right. <laughs> That's how close you got to be getting. Getting caught up inside the mangroves is normal, all right? You know, over time, and I'm not the best caster by any stretch of the imagination, okay? I suck at it. But uh, even I get caught up in the mangroves, guys. And uh, you see, that was the third time I pitched in there, and the third time I got my bait stolen. So what that basically tells me is that there's a bunch of bait snatchers in there, a.k.a. grunts. And uh, I don't try to catch grunts with hook and line. In fact, you know, people spend hours in the bridge of pier trying to catch grunts with hook and line. I'm telling you, the easiest, best way to catch those things, you just chum the water really good, get them all excited, and just throw a net right on top of them. <laughs> I kid you not. You'll have 20 grunts. I mean, I've done it, people. I've done it over and over again. That's how you catch grunts. Unless you just like to catch them with hook a line. But uh, if you just want to get get some good food, you know, quick, 
uh, sandwich meat, then, you know, that's how you do it. You do it with a cast net. And uh, I don't know if that's legal or not, but, you know, I'm not the one who uh, pays attention to that anyway. And uh, this, is, this, is, this is what I'm talking about right here. Okay? See, even I get hooked up uh, on shit along the mango line. You know, if this is not happening to you, you're not doing it right. Okay? This is what needs to happen if you want to catch the fish. you got to get hooked up in the roots and into the mangroves. This was just some dead tree that was just pushed up against there. <clears throat> and uh, this was on the other side of the lake. See, there's some guy's house right there. And I was fishing that guy's house. <laughs> and I caught this fish. And he had a nice little skiff there, like a uh, little tiny uh, Carolina skiff and I got this nice uh, snapper there not the biggest snapper in the world but hey this is only two hours of fishing so you know if I would have felt a little more hardcore about it I would have done it longer I mean, who knows I would have maybe caught a snook or a, or a tarpon which you know they love these places and uh back there behind me is, is my live well and my live well if you haven't seen my previous videos it's just a 10 gallon uh, brute trash can with three aerators on top of the lid and I just throw my catches in there you know I even throw snook and stuff in there and they live they'll stay alive all the way to the kitchen in that thing but and this works really good on uh, bridge and piers too you know I just anchor it down with some rope or whatever onto a little dolly <laughs> and I just take it right to the bridge or the pier or whatever and uh, it acts as a cooler and a live well I mean it's a win-win so you can see how far away the the land is from where I was and I'm all the way on the other side of the lake so that's how far away I am from land and you know you can just stop anywhere on US 1 and you can just fish the mangroves all along US 1 and literally just 10 yards away from land and be catching these kinds of fish, you know, the little snappers and whatnot. And uh, it's actually more productive doing this than actually fishing off bridges and piers, in my opinion. And uh, I don't know how cold that water is. It's a bit nippy, but uh, since I'm always doing this kind of shit, uh, my legs are... I don't know, they don't get very cold. My feet and my legs don't get very cold. Now, my upper body, has, that's different. It's a little bit more sensitive because they spend less time in the water, I guess. And uh, this, is, this is my little religion, okay? Every, after every fishing, kayak fishing trip, this is what I do. And even though I bought this thing used on Craigslist and it had a bunch of holes in it that I repaired, uh, it still runs good and the reason why it runs good is because of what I'm doing right here I'm just rinsing everything off after every single trip and uh, another very important thing to keep your stuff going for a very long time is to keep them covered keep them out of sunlight because nothing <laughs> will fuck your shit up more than UV rays so and I, I don't have a, a garage or anything, so I just covered it with tarp. Yeah. Yeah, sunlight, UV is plastic's worst enemy. And, uh, see, this is just my tarp I got lying there. I got another kayak up under there. And, uh, this, this is what I do, man. To keep my things going. As old as that boat is, it still goes good. Still does good. Still serves its purpose. And the uh, same thing with my net here. This net, I've been running, I don't know, two years maybe. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of patchwork on it because it gets snagged up on things. But, it's still good. <laughs> I mean going a long time with this one net and I keep the WD-40 right here at my door so that I remember to oil my pliers unless you want to be buying pliers every month 
and you will need to buy them every month if you're called kayak fishing with them uh, it's always good to keep them oiled and you can you can keep them running for a long time too and those are a pair of nail clippers I keep all kinds of sharp objects with me you never know what you're gonna need out there I'm telling you pliers uh, nail clippers knives multiple knives I mean you, you, you can't have enough sharp things and uh, as you can see that's as fresh as they get it's not gonna get fresher than that so I keep them I keep them alive all the way and I, I've even kept uh, big fish alive grouper snook you name it and uh, to scale them I just use the blunt thing. I just use a spoon a little teaspoon and it gets those scales right off very easy I'm really hungry so I'm going to eat the chicken and some fish with all these vegetables in here and uh, this over here is actually some leftover sour orange from Christmas because I made like a Cuban pork and I'm just going to pour that in there and just let that cook in the orange, the sour orange I'm feeling really lazy. I'm not really doing anything special. You know, I just want to. I want to take it, get clean, and get warm. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I don't want to be fucking around doing anything else. So I'm just gonna put this whole thing into the oven, and it's gonna bake. This is gonna tell me when it's ready. I'm gonna go to now beep and tell me when it's ready. <clears throat> See, let me just get a video of that. And so I don't overcook it, man. With that fucking juice swimming around in there.